thing. That's right. Spark up those doobies. It's time to talk cannabis. Yeah, we talk cannabis, sex talk, hitting the sleigh button, and so much more with our very special guest, Aaron Richard. Don't you want to be around beautiful things? I know I do. Let me go get one of my cars. M. Oh. M. Mom. When your first choice is a big old bus, you turn around and boom, you end up with a sloppy second. Oh, diva. Ah. <laughs> oh my god, it's so far away. Still works. Our number is 213-536-9180. Our email is sloppysecondspot at gmail.com. Now on with the show. Hi, you slap, you stupid little f***ing, you not so f***ing, you darling little f***ing. Welcome to Sloppy Second. We're going to bring me Paul. I'm me Paul, and that's Big Dipper. What would you have done if Studio 54 was around when you, now, or you were alive then? You know what the sentence I'm trying to say? Cocaine and death. <laughs> I would be in there 24-7. Wouldn't that be wild? Did you ever see the movie 54? No. Ryan Philippe? No. Salma Hayek? No. The guy who played Austin Pyres, Mike Mauer. <laughs> wow, Mike? Mike? Wow, wow, wow. Mouth and lips. But wasn't there a TV show about it with Courtney Cox? <laughs> Probably. I did one time. Nev go, Campbell was Nev also Campbell. in the movie. Um, I did one time go to 54 Below, which is where Studio 54 used to be and uh, is now a musical theater venue to see Tamara that. Tooney. Who Tamara was, Hall? No, I think her name's Tamara Tooney. Tom Tamara King? Tooney. Tommy she was Toons. from Law and Order SVU and she was a bum bum. <laughs> bum bum, but then she sings jazz standards. And all I wanted to talk to her about was working with Olivia Benson after the show. And she said, Thank you so much and patted me on the double pat. Tap. And I said, Okay, I've annoyed her enough. Start spreading the news. Are you, you ready for a. What? You Did want... she sing Start Spreading the News? I don't really remember what she sang. I was, again, very drunk because I was living in New York City. Are you <laughs> ready for our guest, you dumb? F yes. You can find him online, mastering the art of the sesh. You can see him hanging out with drag queens and smoking all the time. It's Aaron Richards! Hello. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. I have to tell both of you uh -oh. that uh -oh. this is such an honor because I feel like I'm definitely a huge fan of this show. If you look at my Spotify, I've listened to every single episode for at least the past year That's and a few insane beyond. That's insane to me. Why? It's just, you we seem so make busy. Why would this be something that you'd opt to listen to? Let me tell you why, okay? okay. I, I, number one, I am very busy. So <laughs> sometimes... <laughs> Cause listen, here. I am. <laughs> um, no, I really am. And so like when I have downtime and I want to turn my brain off, it's, I, <laughs> well, listen, there's a more, there's a full explanation okay. here. <laughs> I work in a very, very like masculine heteronormative industry. So to like give myself to like queerness to like, you know, like really unleash and like just be who I really am. I feel like sloppy seconds is like the fastest road to just like the queerest queer. That is true. Quick. And so it's we like right down to it. If I get if I have five percent of my time to listen to something queer for that part of myself, it's got to be you guys. I love that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Now, I've got some questions for you. Know you know how much time I have based on percentages. Let yeah. me get into that. <laughs> what? What? He goes, if I have 5% of my time, I'm like, if you know 5% of your time, that's insane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. To break it down. Like it's 100%. 100%. 100%. It's cooked down to the minute for sure. <laughs> my day. <laughs> Is yours not? You seem so busy, no, Dipper. No. Yesterday was an insane thing. And I had like three people kind of cancel. And one person was like, oh, I'm having car trouble. And I was like, yeah, we should totally reschedule. I just like, I abandoned ship yesterday. Mm. And that it felt nice. It felt incredible. I did nothing yesterday. I'm so jealous. I did a thousand things, but I was supposed to do two thousand. So right. it was cool to have a little. And how do you feel about yourself when you don't accomplish everything you wanted to set out? Does Not it set in with you? The Sometimes same way? it's great it's when I get to delete those things off my calendar or like slide them to another day, and then I go like, mm, nothing left on Monday. Okay, you know what I mean. There you go. How do you get through your day? Are you smoking all day, or yeah, do you, you wait high? till the end? Are you high right now? I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sober, but one hundred percent, one percent high. Are you? 
<laughs> Definitely, I've I've had a, I had a dab this morning. I would say on an average, and this this average does need to change. Yes, this thank you. Dab. Um, this average we does need it. to drop. Uh, but I would say I usually have like a little bit of THC in my system every day around noon, and then like after four o'clock, like come four twenty, I'm like bongs out. Let's go. I don't really care. Like I love to ride that coffee to THC line real hard. Oh, because we're all sort of like pencils down. It's five o'clock. But yeah. you're at four twenty. That's when the day is done. The work day. Uh, well, I put a lot of creative work into everything that happens after four o'clock because mm. I love it helps with creativity for me mm. a lot. Okay. Especially if I have energy for it. I see now what it helps for me is that I get Sleep. ripped <laughs> by and then try to do something that should take 30 minutes and it takes about 40, 40 hours. Like, I don't know. It just adds. But you to have everything. fun. I do have a good time doing it, even though I make mis- more mistakes. Sure. Which I think is fine. I have, like, severe ADHD diagnosed, and cannabis helps, like, focus me in and, like, dial well, me right into what I need to do. Collab. Right. So coffee's keeping me awake. THC is keeping me focused. Okay. You know, like, I can run circles around a creative idea from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock if I'm high and caffeinated. Now that sounds like a good time. I want to be on that. I need you to write me out a little schedule. I on will. When and how. I, I'm happy because, because I'm, I'm waking up at 6.30 a.m. <laughs> so going early? Straight into getting high and then starting my work day. I think you should stay away from flour until the afternoon. I think concentrates and like out of a device. <laughs> This is not recommended advice. This is just like what yeah, I would do. Yeah, you're just I am not a medical you're professional. Just a guy. I'm also never doing anything important. Yeah, I think concentrates done through something like a puff coat that's never superheating them to the point where it's burning, but it's just like vaporizing the THC molecule. Okay. It's like a light head thing, and it's not like making your body tired. Okay. And then in the afternoon, you infl- infuse the flower, which is gonna make your body a little more relaxed. You know what I'm saying? So I'm into that. I, I understood that seven percent of that sentence. It's like yeah. a little vaporizer. Or like, uh, but you're uh, saying puff pin, not because we've talked about. Pin. I had like a little addiction to Stizzy. Do you care if we say their name? No. no okay. Because no. I love the Stizzy vape pens, but you were saying that's full of chemicals and stuff. Well, it's just I wouldn't recommend anyone do distillate or cartridges as like their main consumption. It's good for like when you're out and you can't have like a uh, more healthy means of consumption, like straight up concentrates that don't have any processors in them. Okay. You know what I mean? So that was sort of my point with that. It's just oh, like I threw it away. You scared me. Oh, well. Good. G- get okay. rosin. Rosin is like the purest form of vape cart if you were going to do that. And I think I have a vape cart that's what I'm using today. But like if I can bring my little puffco piece around with me or if I can bring some sort of dry herb vape I want to be like as consciously healthy as I can. And you were also bringing it up from like a point of health perspective when yes, you were chatting about because it. Because I thought uh, it was causing my pancreas to die. Well, but that was just generalized. But I threw it away. I got rid of everything bad and then drank it all this weekend. <laughs> Wait, do you live in here? Uh <laughs> <laughs> do you live in California or do you live in Denver, Colorado? I live in I live in Denver. I'm oh, repping Denver today. Yeah, you didn't know that? No, that's I, where their club is. I thought you lived in California. No, but you're, you're just out here all the time, and yeah. you know everybody that we know. I have a lot of good friends out here. Yeah, weed brings people together. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh huh. Right. I also before doing what I do now, I uh, like I I had a YouTube channel in 2018. Yeah, where I was known as the Gay Stoner. Yes. Top millions of people how to smoke weed was the number one Google result for like how to smoke weed for a long mm-hmm. time. YouTube deleted my channel in 2018 when I was at 190,000 subscribers, oh, along with hundreds of other cannabis creators in like a cannabis purge. And I got a bunch of those people together and we co-founded WeedTube, which went on to be the world's largest cannabis social media platform. Yeah, I have heard about WeedTube. WeedTube was huge. Yeah. So and I was the CEO of that for three years. Huh? Yeah. So that was super fun. This is why he owns three cars. <laughs> But what? what about the... Sim- That's because I wrote a book. <laughs> and what, have, what have you done with five... <laughs> what have you, know you what done I mean? with five percent of your day? You Literally, this is what I'm saying. I don't know how you find the time and also consume weed. It's insane to me. Well, the weed tube was all by itself. Pandemic happened. I was bored. I wrote two sci-fi novels that are like... They're gay. not even books about weed? No, they're gay, like it's gay main character, <laughs> young adult, sci-fi, aliens and gay main character vibe. It's called Being Found. Everybody check it out. It's well rated on Amazon. I love it. Um, I wanted to what write What are a- you doing? <laughs> I'm illiterate and I can't handle a day-to-day Yeah, activity. when you, listen, when My are you going to make the audio books and can I be the voice? <laughs> there is an audio book. <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> well, listen, 
I wanted to write a book for the like 14 year old me that was in the library, like desperate for a book that I could relate to with like like a fantasy story with like a gay main character. Right. So so nice. So now that exists for them. Is there butt butt sex in a book? No, I mean the second book there is a it gets the most sexual, but it's not super because I want to stay on that like. Ages of like fifteen to twenty five. Yeah, not trying to get you know banned. I mean? Right in the library. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. What about the censorship of like the YouTube? You were talking about the YouTube purge and all that stuff. It, it's like kind of challenging to be a cannabis influencer, right? Because even though you know we're living in a world where how many, what, what, what number of states is it legal? Twenty two. Yeah, and growing. So it's like we're on the precipice of you know like, but why are they so? about it being on the internet I, it's multifold. i think top tier advertisers don't want their content in front of cannabis content mm. next tier children are on the internet so mm. like majority of people are worried about that third tier would be they can't get in on it yet because it's not federally legal. Like, if platforms like YouTube and Instagram could, could make take money, money mm. from the the industry for advertising, you know, they they can't let people be platformed right now for that. Sort How of thing. far away do you think we are from a federally legal? Oh, that is like the toughest question as a cannabis professional because it's the one everyone asks and. 99% of us have all like missed the point of when we said it would be. You know what I mean? Like we right. all yeah. said Everyone it was like, oh yeah, 2020. Two years or, ago, yeah. for sure. Like Biden says he's going to deschedule it, which w- is really preferred. Like I'm not, I don't need legalization, but descheduling. Right. Like in what the is, eyes I'm of sorry, the, what is descheduling? I mean? in well, the it's eyes like when of, people cancel plans and then you're just like, free. Oh, okay. No. Yeah. Well. Wow. Um, <laughs> in the eyes of the federal government, like <laughs> cannabis and meth are the same thing. Yeah. Yes. What do so, they schedule? One. So we want it to be descheduled completely oh. or schedule three even. Okay. Yeah. Which is good because then we can like do businesses and have banking and stuff, but it's not so much an issue oh, of, yeah. which we need desperately, especially with the business I'm trying to open. Um but legalizing it comes with a whole lot of problems of like now the federal government's involved in the cannabis industry. Yeah, right. which I think once they realize how much money it's going to bring they in, know. they're going to immediately. They know. Because I was in New York recently and it's decriminalized there, right. but it's like the shops make so much money taking just cash from you to buy the weed. So that they're willing to pay the fines to be open. I'm 90% sure that I'm correct about what I'm going to say. Hopefully someone doesn't roast me in the comp comments it's legal in new york sale but the licensing process is such a nightmare that people just pop up shops for six months make a ton of money yeah and then the city shuts them down and then they just pay that fine and then they move on because to actually get through the hoops is a fucking nightmare so what is it like because you're opening your own social club in denver yeah what has that experience been like and what's what's a social club versus versus like like medmen here yeah, so it's called Cirrus. It's like, which is like a cloud, the highest cloud in the sky. I'm about to be the highest cloud here. Clown in <laughs> here, you know what I mean? Period. Thin, thin, wispy little clouds, highest in the sky. Well, period. Um, <laughs> How high? Very high, like 30,000, I don't know. Like a plane. Yeah, literally like a plane. Mm. Uh, so it's called Cirrus Social Club. More so Cirrus. We've really like, it's crazy in the last year of like developing this out. We just call it Cirrus now mm-hmm. because Social Club implies something that I don't know that it is. What it is, is it's like if Martha Stewart opened a weed lounge for the whole world. Mm. So like the goal is to get the most amount of people in the world seshing together. Um, and sort of my end goal in that has always been my Nana, who is my grandma on my mom's side. Okay. But she's super young Nana, so she would never let me call her grandma. Um, I feel like Nana is, like, older. Yeah, well, not to her back then. She it was wasn't, like, I guess. call me Lucy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The younger grandkids call her grandma, but I don't. I call oh, her don't. Nana. I don't do That's that. That's nice. Uh, her and I were on the phone after I, like, got the license and everything, and I was like, are you going to come? And she's like, of course I'm going to come. And from that moment forward, I was like, this has to be such a thing that my Nana will come and have a good time. Mm. But in the same way, if my Nana comes and has a good time, so can like every other adult human being. Mm-hmm. Whereas like if you build it for like my Uncle Keith, like a sports bar, a lot of people aren't going to come. Yeah. I'm not going to go to that. Yeah. Right. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it's it's kind of like this big hard rock cafe level size business that that is like 8,600 square feet that mm. is designed to like 
be full Thursday, Friday, Saturday night for a new social environment with new conversations and a I new level of consciousness. I love that. Thank it you so much. so cool. And you've been doing smaller sessions around. I know you did some in LA where you had yep. a bunch of the queens together. Yeah. Where Bitch Pudding and Gabriel Gastelum told me that it was the highest they had ever been yeah. and the most fun that they've ever had. Because it's not just like everyone sitting in a circle smoking weed and like, oh, my parents are going to walk in. It's like, a beautiful <laughs> table set up. You know, there's that always that fear when you're smoking weird that like you're gonna get caught. Well, yeah, yeah because I mean, it feels illegal. Yeah, but this they were like, oh, it was beautiful. We yeah. were outside. There was food. It was like it sounds like a just like a lovely evening. I haven't talked about a lot of this stuff on other shows that I've been on because. In, like, the cannabis industry, I'm, like, kind of protective of, like, what we're doing until we're open. Oh, sure. Um, but to to you guys and family and all the family oh, listening at home, so the sloppy f- at home. Um, well, I did see, like, a, p- a post about maybe a workshop you led in Las Vegas with a bunch of other professionals. Yeah. So and there was that, too. It was so interesting to see, like, you were clearly, like, talking and everyone was, like, engaged and it felt like a wellness workshop. And there's just a huge... Bongs. Puff of slope, smoke, and bongs at the round the table. I know. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. Like, why do we think that should be in the basement? Or think that exactly. I remember fucking hotboxing in high school. That was yeah. like, my, my friend was very frugal. And so she was like, oh, yeah, we only smoke with the windows up. Oh, here. yeah, we did that all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I have a theory that weed loves to be around beautiful things. Mm-hmm. And so and so do I. I love to be surrounded by beauty, probably because I'm high all the time. <laughs> so, Same. yeah. Weed loves to be surrounded by beautiful things, and that's, like, what the inside of Cirrus is. And, like, it's really a culmination of all the things that I've been through in my life. Like, I even remember being, like, 10 years old and asking my Nana, like, for a new comforter that matched the color I painted my wall in my bedroom. You know what I mean? Smart. Like. Single father, didn't get it. But like me, I'm over here like, can I get this comforter for Christmas? And they're like, here's a soccer ball. But my Nana's like, here's the comforter you wanted. You know what I mean? So like beauty, I've always wanted to be around beautiful things. And that's why Cirrus like is a beautiful place. But it's also about the service where we're like taking care of every step of getting someone high for the first time. And then it's like a magic show to where you're never in your head. We're like, look over here, look over here. Like now have this tea, now try these sandwiches. Like, and we're all talking about what's going on. So you're having like a new elevated experience. You never have that chance to like go into paranoia or feel too high. Why would you? But we're not wired to be high together in public yet. Yeah. So I think Cirrus is going to bridge that gap. Whoa. I think I want to try it because it just seems like it's better than smoking alone. Yeah. Which is always weird to smoke and play video games for like hours. Except I know what you do. You end up cackling to yourself. Oh, about I talk to myself shit. and just laugh. Yeah. Oh, babe, me. I, at the end of a, <laughs> uh, oh, seven bitch, o'clock. I get on TikTok and I'm just TikTok. Like, That's what I was literally going to say. <laughs> me on TikTok stoned. Oh, my God. If the world ever got a hold of my TikTok likes, it would be problematic. <laughs> Because I just think the worst things are funny when I'm high. But it's fun. Me too. And I'll send them to people and they're like, I don't get it. And I'm like, I know it's a 10-minute video and it's just two people talking, but it'll get there. Trust me. Yeah. It never gets there. I'm interested in Sirius After Dark when the strippers come out. You know what I mean? Oh, period. Of course you would turn it into a sex thing. All right. We'll be right back. (laughs) And we're back. Hit the slay button. Now I am curious as a can- as a cannabis professional, mm-hmm. how many names for weed can you oh. come up with right now? Ganja, dro, dro, um, grass, reefer, Kush. Uh, I don't know. I'm running. Sweet, I'm running sticky, flat. Icky. Sticky icky. Yeah. Mary Jane. Mary Jane. What's the one that they rappers say it? And it's like the one. Loud? That does that is describing a potency or a smell of in the air. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, how come some weed smells good and oh wait, we're not done. Sorry. Um, <laughs> got ga, ga, ganja stranja. You yeah. led with ganja. How come some weed smells like <laughs> skunk when you up. smoke it and some weed smells like floral and beautiful? Is that just like terpenes? What'd you call me? <laughs> and at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> you should really. <laughs> what is that? Terpenes. <laughs> is that like when you're wine tasting and it has legs? You know. No, I about? think isn't the terpenes what makes it like more or less potent? Terpenes are like the um, the odor, the molecules that are going to be causing the effects that you have from the cannabis. So if you have like. 
limonene terpene. It's like an uplifting sativa vibe. You know how people say sativa indica or people say like THC percentage. That's like not as current and factual as talking about a terpene profile, oh, which is what uh. would, you know, it's what gives off the odor. It's the effect that it gives you. It's, you know, it's what makes up each different it's strain. Profile. And Wait, the is there time, like a cannabis sommelier? Yes. What are they called? Gongier. It's a new a program. Gongier? Yeah, developed by a friend of mine, Max Simon. It's like this whole program where you, yeah, like learn how to like analyze weed from like the deepest levels for like weeks. And yeah, I have, I have a friend who's one. It's so cool. That's insane. Gongier. Such a talent. Gongier. I'd love to do it one day. I'd love yeah, to, to be do it able to like, this was grown in California. Right. What? To say that, to just know. So you're... I mean, and, but at the same time, oh, by the way, go. you should always go by your nose. You should smoke the weed that smells good to your nose. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's like your body saying this is it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oftentimes, though, at the dispensaries, you can't smell them. Like they're just pre-packaged right. already, and like I don't really like that. But I do smoke the weed that my boyfriend grows, which right. is nice, and it smells nice to me. It stinks up the whole house when you're growing it, though. Do you think that it gets you more or like less high than when you buy dispensary weed? Is it like more mild or is it more intense? It's definitely stronger, but I oh. do smoke less of it. Okay. Yeah. I would have thought the other way. So you're, you're he's growing no, some he's good stuff. No, he's in there like doing science and Is he singing to them? Like, I don't know about singing to them, but it's like on a sketch. Well, there's you should music in the house. Oh okay. yeah, it's all, it's right next to the drag room. So it's hearing me all day. Good. Just wicketing it you up. You got to sing to them. They Going love to be dead? sung to them. Really? Yeah, they love that. That's so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you know Little Shop of Horrors? Oh, yeah. The weed comes out and eats me. But don't you also know, like, that theory of, like, if you, like, have a glass of water with, like, a like a plant in it and you yell, like, I hate you at it every day, it will, like, die and crumble. But if you, like, say you love it to it every day, it'll, like, grow faster. Never heard that. It's true. It's a mm. truly proven, like, thing. I'm wondering now if I should try that. <laughs> Do you walk around your house yelling at your plants? You know, your plant room is thriving. It's thriving now, but it was dying a while ago. It also just makes you think about the energy that we have put towards things, like, and how it impacts them. But you, like, love, love plants. Like, are you a florist? Are you trained? Or did you just get into loving flowers? So I read this. You know, we all have pivotal moments where we shift as people. Everybody has them sometimes where we're, like, really challenged. And during, like, a really challenging time in my life, I read this book called A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. And it just made, it shifted so much in me to where I, like, saw, like, I feel like I was, like, literally, like, blind to what the world looked like. So we're not trying to get spiritual, but um, I feel like I was, like, blind to what the world was really like until I read this book. And afterwards, like, everything in the world was so beautiful to me, especially flowers. So, like, being with them and sitting with them and, like, touching them and, and taking time with them and being able to work with, like, and learn from incredible people that are florists. Um, it's just, it's something that's for me, but also, like, translates into the things I get to do with my time. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. I feel like. So well read. I feel like Vicky Fox now. Oh, she she's has gone on, on a, a journey. journey. Babe, that episode, I was on a flight to New York for my birthday listening to you guys talking to her. And I was just like, this is, I, I was like, I need to talk to Vicky. This is incredible. Yeah. You should see her while she's out here. She does like the sound healing and yeah. all that. Incredible. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, we do have so many like chapters in our lives and so many like you know, we're talking about busyness. We're talking about like our schedules, all that stuff. We we we've had a few conversations here where, um, you know, as you get older, it's not like we're very lucky. I think all of us at this table are lucky because we get to sort of work on stuff that we love, mm -hmm. and we're able to finesse it into making a living, and it isn't a hobby. And sort of when you tip over into that space, sometimes you can feel stuck because yeah. you're like oh, this is a castle I've built, mm -hmm. but also like, oh gosh, I'm stuck in this castle. Mm. You know, I've, I have I have to keep going. I have to keep doing my party. I have to put on a wig again. And it is so interesting to know that there is freedom that we can like have a chapter and be like, oh yeah, that's when I did that. And now I do this other thing or like my brain has shifted and I don't have to like do exactly what I have been doing for the last decade. 100%. And that book is... 100%. Is, 100 today. I think I'm realizing that I speak in percentages now. But That's because you're a business well, lady. Well, it helps me understand maths. And I have yeah. to. I, I Yeah. That, <laughs> you're right. The business thing. That's literally what it is. It is. I literally talk in percentages all day Well, long. you're one... You're 30% of this... Well, no. 33.3333 33 33 repeating. Repeated. Percent of this conversation. Yes, that's right. And that's 100% amazing. <laughs> 
period. I have a slay button, everybody, so I can hit it. If you didn't notice, I've Now it's interesting because I would actually call this a button. Well, you have to hit the slay button and then it calls you a Yeah, I would actually call that- Hit the slay button. I would call it a, a uh, pink button. A slur button? Yeah. Oh, she doesn't um, say it. But I, I brought with myself a <laughs> slur yeah, button. I can't believe you brought your own. You that, psycho. That I need you to record yourself saying hit the slay button for me to hit all the time in my life. And by the way, it has overwhelmingly taken over my life. This podcast is like <laughs> so fun because I, again, like I work with so many straight people. And so like, if I'm like on a long drive with someone who's on my team, I will like ask them for consent. Like, do you mind if I listen to my favorite podcast? Because <laughs> oh, no, sometimes no. Dipper be doing Dipper things. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Dipper yeah. talks a lot. And um, <laughs> yeah, here on this No, podcast. talks a lot about his nasty <laughs> behaviors. I really love it. I hope you never stop. Thank I you. also love it when people call in and be like, it's 8 a.m. Can you shut the <laughs> f up? Did you I love both sides of it. I know. I love both sides of it. I'm trying to sleep. Stop screaming. It's hard to fall asleep. It's hard to, to fall asleep podcast. to your podcast when Meatball keeps screaming. Yeah. If this, someone made a smoking game that was like, take a ball and rip every time Dipper goes way too far, like you'd be belligerent. Yeah. Uh, well, and I'm about to be taking some bong. You know how to that do bong it. you just got me. Do. Yes. No, are you a fan of Wicked? Wicked. Do you know Wicked? Uh, you know I've Wicked? never seen the show, but I do know a few great songs. How have you never seen the show? I don't know. Fake fan. Yeah, no, I didn't say it was. Okay. Put your ears in. I've got a message to play. Oh. Hi, Big Dipper and Meatball. Oh, my God. I just left Wicked, um, seeing it for the first time, and mind blown. I definitely can relate to everything and how you feel about Wicked, and I will be singing this the rest of the week. Goodbye. All right, so Thanks I just thought I think you... it was a little loud. <laughs> yeah. So I do yeah. love music. So everyone <laughs> says, you know, thank you for that. They agree with us. The second act is terrible. Okay. Great, 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 All right. great. Heard. Is, are your... they doing the movies in those acts? First and second, the same? Do yeah. we know? I mean, probably. But right? it's the movie, so I'm sure going to add scenes and move things around. Right. Who well, are... they also said they're based it on the book, like more on the book, book? than just the Who musical. are Adina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth going to play as cameos? They're not in it at all, I don't think. I heard that they're in the movie as cameos. Like they're going to make an appearance as like a tongue in cheek thing. Like an old witch they in the... To, uh, yeah, she's going to be the old Wicked Witch. <laughs> no, like, you know, in Hogwarts when they go to a town. The feet. And there's like a barmaid or the something. Pro okay, well, here it is. It's, it'll be Kristen Chenoweth, <laughs> and she's going to slide open the thing for Munchkin Land. Because <laughs> she's short, and that's what they're called in the show. And she'll just go, the wizard will see you now! Well, that's not Munchkin Land. That's in Oz. And okay. Munchkin Land is just the village that has no walls or doors at the end of the Elvick Road. Oh, Diva. well, great. So she'll be the mayor of Munchkin Land. Talk about fake fan. Well, I don't care about the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, fake I care fan. about Wicked. Uh, mm. How do you feel about sober people? Love sober people. Okay. Also, um, in, a, in a weird way, like I am always like hanging out with sober friends at the bar because I'm like a mocktail person. Like I don't sure. like alcohol. Okay, so you don't drink. Yeah, no. Well, I will, but like, it's got to be worth it. It's just f***ed with my mental health so much that it's just not worth it mm -hmm. to me. What's um, worth it? Like a mojito? No. Like an apple teeny? <laughs> More like the friends I'm with. Like if it's my birthday <laughs> or like something. <laughs> he didn't mean no. like what drink. He meant like the No, I experience. know. I was just taking uh, a conversation where I wanted it to. Yeah, what, about yeah. a, what about a double tequila soda with two limes? <laughs> Is that worth it? I mean, it sounds like fun. If I'm on vacation, if I'm in liquor. Mexico, that sounds great. But otherwise, yeah, I, t I tend to like, l like last night I went out to, oh my God, have you guys heard of this? I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this. The San Vicente Bungalows? No. no. It's this private members only club. Apparently yeah, like uh, Margot Robbie and like Elon Musk and all these people are members. And a member took me to dinner last night and they like put a sticker over your cameras uh, so you can't take a picture of anything. Oh, and it was so just cool. the most amazing thing. And the mocktails were so delicious. It was so lovely. It's hard to find a good mocktail. They're also yeah. sugary. It's like, I get that that's what that's you think true. I'm after, but I'm more after just like, I don't refreshing. Know, a refreshing flavor. Something that's hard to drink, even maybe. Like yes. a, more bitter tasting. Exactly. Right? Same oh, vibe yeah. as like a, a, a drink. You're not chugging it. You're sipping. One and of my favorites it, is apple cider vinegar, sparkling water, and then um, pureed cucumber. Because you get that bite from the apple cider vinegar, right. but the cucumber's sweet. 
That sounds. Oh, funny. you're really in your mocktail bag these days. Well, I well, yes, I am, but not at CCBC. I was drinking straight tequila. Yeah, yeah, it really did me dirty. Did you guys have fun? I hope you guys had fun. Yeah, I we had so a good time. To hear it was it. definitely. Um, uh, it was a new experience for us to be performing for naked people. No, just to like be there together because we both there was like a vacation day involved. Kind of, yeah. And you guys hung out a little. I a mean, little briefly bit in the morning, by the and pool. then I had to get ready. And then you, he was like doing his own stuff during the day, and then took a nap. His own stuff. He, he like went into town, and I okay. stayed into town. We're okay. like in Palm Springs. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, Palm Springs adjacent. adjacent. It was ten minutes away. Yeah. No, it was it was fun. It just was. We we sort of briefly mentioned it on the episode where you were like, "We've made it this far without ever like be, like seeing each other have sex." Yeah. Which I don't know is that I guess that's not weird in a gay. How many uh, of your partnership? friends have you seen had sex? Zero. Yeah, see? But do you, like, I, talk about sex with them all the time? No, you talk at me about your Just because you won't participate, go back in the log to the beginning of the show. Yeah, I was actually on the way here, pulled up an old episode of a live show. Yeah. And you were talking about something about you and your partner. Yeah. And stopping for certain Why reasons. You? Why would you bring that up? Well, I'm not going to go Whose side are you on? Because <laughs> there was Seriously. a time when the talk was a um 33.333 repeating 33.333 repeating 33.333 repeating conversation and now it's 90 percent me talking about my film and maybe well, but also today. as a viewer it does sometimes feel like when we get to talk like you'll be with the guests and you'll be like so do you have any stories and well i do i have one thing <laughs> Like he's just ready to go. I, sometimes he's like, because I'm a good producer, and, he's and I don't think we can't it. have dead. But eggs. also, sometimes people don't know it's coming, so it's yeah. nice to give them a chance to be like, "This is how weird he's gonna get." Oh, the conversations I've had with people in my life about what am I gonna say for f talk? I mean, when we're not there yet, good. So you have a little bit more time. I can't wait. So you have three cars. <laughs> I do. Yeah. <laughs> what are what about they? That? I think. Um, Cars are, like, people have their things that they love. Mm -hmm. I love flowers, too. But um, I've always loved cars since I was, like, a little kid. Like, on my YouTube channel, like, a third of, or, um, like, if you log onto my YouTube on my TV, like, a third of it is car content. Like, mm -hmm. I just love cars. I love the engineering of cars, like, the decisions made, like, car brands, like, car lore. I just love that stuff. So, yeah, I do. I have a Kia Stinger. I know. I'm jealous electric? of that one. That's not electric. It's their little sports car oh. that they... The guy who used to design for Audi went and worked for Kia, and Fun. it was the f he did like three cars for them. He did like their basic SUV, their basic sedan, and he was like, "But you have to let me build a sports car. That's like the the way I'm going to do this for you." So they build a whole new factory. They build a sports car. If you guys are familiar with Genesis, it's what Genesis is are built off of the platform of the Stinger now because Ooh. of the Stinger. So I have that. I have a Cadillac I just XT5. Her with a Genesis. Oh, yeah. a Cadillac. Yeah, she got a Caddy. That's for work to pick people up in and stuff. She's cute. Just a little commuter car. Um, I didn't want to leave the stinger on the side. Like my Sears that we're opening is like I would have to park on the street on mm -hmm. like a busy street and it would get destroyed. So I just didn't. I wanted to get a car for that. And then I have a Raptor truck for four wheeling and like outdoor adventure stuff. Damn, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Three cars, bitch. Yeah. You say I'm bougie. I 100% believe you to be a very bougie person. I love that. Because of the flowers, <laughs> because of the style and aesthetic of the events and the aesthetic of your store, the fact that you'll repaint a purple wall three times to make sure it's the right color purple. She's, I love that. That's true. But I is, it, is it? Is it the right color purple? Now Are it you is. Happy? Okay. Now I'm happy with it. But is it bougie or is it like, you know, with a focus on aesthetics? I mean, I guess owning three cars is bougie. I would say... That three cars is not bougie <laughs> if they were all Lexus. The yes, three maybe. cars is bougie. Well, right. And I was so grateful to have been invited by that person. Um, <laughs> bougie. Um, I think it's a neat, it's a desire to be around beautiful things. And I think mm. it's, you know, like grew up single father, worked as hard as he could, like, you know, to like keep a roof over our head. And I never really, you know, we didn't have the finer things. And so like when I, you know, worked really hard to like have some success and made some money, I was like, I'm going to, you know, get things that I want. I want to surround myself with things that I want to be around. And I worked hard to be here and I'm going to like all my cars are like really well taken care of. Mm -hmm. Like, so I, I like take care of the things I love. And I definitely like made it to a point where like, no matter how much more money I could ever make in my life, I, I wouldn't do anything different. I'm good. Like I don't need anything more than what I have, which is just like a lovely home and 
three nice cars that are fast. And a store set up or a yes. social club that you're starting. Which isn't for me. That's for the world. I do have a question. When did you start smoking weed? Like, Yeah, when I, I smoked weed the first time in high school, like three times maybe. Um, and then when I was 22... I was born with a blood cell disease called mastocytosis and cannabis became legal in Colorado in 2012 when I was 22. And my doctor was like, hey, this might be a good solution for you now that it's an option hmm. for like to, to get rid of like three of the many pills you have to take every day. Um, and so I started having cannabis, you know, because my partner at the time was like not about it. He was like, cannabis is dangerous. But then when the doctor said that, he was like, all right, well, let's see how it goes for you. And from He's that like, day, babe, babe, let's share your medicine. Yeah. yeah from that day <laughs> forward, we both became stoners and never like looked back. Oh, my gosh. That's incredible. Yeah. We saved my life. I really think the world would be a better place if everybody had a little weed every once in a while, I which is the purpose of Cirrus. Yeah. Now, are you going to brand and grow your own weed eventually, or is it just... I would want to, like, utilize flour that's being grown by, an, by a, like, an established grower. I don't want to come in and do the job of someone who's an expert, mm -hmm. but I do want someone to grow, like, sun-grown, low-potency cannabis for us. Mm -hmm. Because I want people to, you know, like, a lot of people... Again, like if my Nana came, like the weed isn't like it is now what it was in the 60s and 70s. Like, yeah. and, and it could, it should be. There's nothing wrong with it being a little less strong. You know what I mean? I don't understand why people want it to be so strong. We were just talking about it, but like there was a point where we were smoking these like insane mixtures of like seven different types of weed covered with keef and like an oil and stuff. And I was like, this isn't fun. I just go, I get too high. Yeah. I you remember that we, we were doing ads for a company for a while and their whole oh, yeah. deal was like, oh, yeah, it's just a little bit of THC. Yeah. Like the 70s. Touch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Those ads that you guys were yeah, doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think it, you know, there's this joke in my industry that's like, what's, what does every customer say when they walk into a dispensary? Like, what's well, the highest THC you have? It's like, you don't go to the liquor store and buy Everclear. What's that guy's number? Well, you know what I mean? you do. It oh, hot. you want it. <laughs> <laughs> He's into gooners now. I'm gagged. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't understand I do like that. him a little dumb. Great. Just for a night. Dumb. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can not guide can't be around a dumb person for too long. I just think about it insane. like ballroom dancing. You know, like when you lead and you ballroom dance, you just like guide a little bit with like the pressure of your yeah. your palm on their like back or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I like when, when a guy is sort of like, you can just kind of guide him. You're like, Let, we're eating over here. Uh-huh. Come over to my house at this time. Uh-huh. You'll do And they're like, sure. Yeah. Great. Sounds great. Or when you make a joke and everyone else at the table is laughing, but they're just sitting there like not laughing, and you're like, "Well, oh, that's okay." Yeah, that's fine. You don't. Yeah. Get it. It's you're okay. Like, Wait, I'll, now I'll I might be into it. I'll, <laughs> tell, I'll, I'll tell you about it later. Yeah, yeah we can I'll, talk I'll about this when we get it. I'll explain it to yeah. you later. Messy. Uh, let's take a break. Mm. 